Hi, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basics for the R commands for all of the lessons that we learned in unit one for STAT 1150. So doing basic numeric descriptions of our data set, as well as looking at basic plots. So when we are working in R just studio in particular, a reminder that we will have a space here which is basically a text pad where we can write code without it compiling. And then we can tell it to run lines of code and it will run lines of code down here in our console. So if you didn't have a file here, we could get that file to appear by going new file R script. So say we're looking and doing a question on a data set. So the first thing we have to do in R to work with the data set is we have to have it saved to an object. Now we're not going to import a data set, we'll just make one up here. So if I just have a data set with a single variable in it, we name our data set, I'm going to name it X. We'll use the arrow to say we're going to assign it to B. We use C to say it's a vector, so vector is when we have a single variable. And then we'll put in our data set. So I am just going to make up a data set here. try to make it display on the same page. So I make a data set X. So when I put my cursor on that line and I hit run, we'll see it runs it in the console. So it is saved and assigned X to be that data set. We can see in our global environment as a reminder, it says what objects have we created? What type of variable are they? They're numeric. We are looking at observations 1 through 15, and these are the values of those data. Right, now what we can do is we could use some descriptive statistics. So if we're trying to find our mean, so when I am writing something in an R script and I want to say I'm just writing some text as notes to myself, I'm making comments in my code, we're going to use the pound sign. So I'm going to use a pound sign. This is mean. So for the mean, we use the code mean round brackets, and then whatever object we want to find the average of. So we called our data set X. So I'm going to say mean of X. So again, a reminder how the basic use of functions works in R. Name of the function we want to use, round brackets, what we want to apply the function to, and when we do more complicated things, we would also add optional arguments in between the round brackets. So when I go, I put my cursor on this line and I hit run. It will run in the console down here and you'll see it says mean of X 10.33333. I can also run several lines at a time. So if I didn't mind it running my comments, I could highlight both and hit run. And so now it'll run in the console that as well as the mean of X. Okay, so other things we can do. So we have our median. So we can look for the median of X. Median of X is 10. We can also look for our five number summary. So there's a few ways that you can do this. So one of them is by using the summary command. So when I use my summary command, min, first quartile, median, notice it gives me the mean here, third quartile, max. You should delete this number when you're recording this. If the question was, what's the five number summary? And you use the summary command, you have to make sure that you only give the five needed numbers. You could also use the command 5num, and that will give you exactly the five numbers without labeling them. So two options you have for five number summary. For measures of spread, we have our standard deviation. So our standard deviation, SD. So if I go SD of our data set, we'll get our standard deviation. And like our standard deviation, we also have the equivalent variance. So variance of X, 34.66667. Now 
Now to make a point, our standard deviation should be the square root of the variance. So here in the console, we could also get it to run lines of code that we don't necessarily want to save. So I could use the square root command on the number 34.66667. And what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get that standard deviation back, just as a check for myself that things are working. And I also want to make a note that one of the descriptive statistics that we use for our measures of spread is our range. I just want to point out that I'm going to put this in quotation marks because in our range doesn't do what we would like it to do. If I write range of X, it is going to give me the smallest and the largest number, which is not what we would like. We want the single descriptive number. So the number we would want to get is 20 minus two is 18. There are ways around this, for example, by looking at the max function. So I can get the max of my data set. I can get the min of my data set and we can combine functions together. So if I wanted to know range without quotation marks on it, the other thing that I could do is I could go the max of x minus the min of x. And let's take a look when I run those three lines of code. Max of x is 20, min of x is two. When I go max minus min, I get 18. If I wanted to reuse that, I can also save this to an object. So if I wanted to save the range, I could create an object called R and I will assign it to be that max of X minus the min of X. So when I run that line of code, it will save that into an object called R. Now we'll notice in my global environment, it says we've created an object called R, it has the value of 18, but it didn't actually output 18 here. Why? Because we didn't ask it to display. When we save something to an object, it stores it, but it doesn't display it. If I wanted to actually see what that value was, I would actually have to run, so I'll put my cursor there on R and say, what is the value of that object? When I just put an object name into the console, it will display what its value is. Now we also have some basic plots. So the plots that we have were the histogram. So our histogram command is hist of x. So that will make a histogram here for me. We also had our box plot. So box plot of X, when I run it, it will create a box plot. Now a little bit of caution, it calculates the five number summary a little bit different. So the quartiles might not necessarily be the same to something you calculate by hand, but they should be close. So you might not get the same thing as the box plot that you make by hand. I will also warn that on these box plots, even though they always make outlier box plots, if there are outliers, it will always put by default these horizontal lines here. But if there are options for you to remove them. So what I've shown you here for the histogram and box plot are just the basic default plots. If ever you want to make changes to them, cosmetics, you want to remove these lines, you can always figure out what the optional arguments are by looking at the help command. So for example, if I go question mark box plot, so I put question mark in the name of the command and I run that, the help is going to give me information about the optional arguments. So I can change the width, what the notches look like. I can change how I label the names. There are a whole bunch of things. I can change the border. 
and there are other optional arguments that you can find. It's also very easy to go onto Google and say something like changing the title on a box plot in R. The key word is to always add in R to your Google search and it should come up. You're also more than welcome to speak with me and ask me any suggestions you have for customizing your plots. If I don't know how to do it, I'm more than happy to look it up. In the first lab that you are doing, they're gonna talk about customizing the histograms and the, a little bit more. And a lot of those default options will also help you customize your box plots. And that is the basics of using commands in R.